With that, let's get into the do operator. One thing that the do operator is very useful for is making the distinction between conditioning and intervening. So if this is the population in this circle here, and these are two subpopulations where t equals zero are the people who didn't take the treatment and t equals one are the people who did take the treatment, then conditioning looks like this. If we were to condition on t equals one, we get this red subset on the top here. And then if we condition on t equals zero, we get this blue subset on the bottom here. Importantly, conditioning means that we're just restricting the data to a specific subset of the data. In contrast, if we are intervening, then we're not restricting the data to a specific subset of the data. Rather, for do t equals one, when we're intervening to set t equal to one, what we're doing is we're doing that for the whole population. So we're saying, what would it be like for everyone in this population to receive treatment one? And similarly for do t equals zero, we're looking at what it would be like if everyone in the population received treatment equals zero. Okay, so this is the visual picture to have in mind for the distinction between conditioning, which is just restricting to a subset, and intervening, which is still looking at the whole population, but setting their value of treatment to the specific value that we're intervening on. So we can introduce a bit more notation now that we have this do operator. The first is interventional distributions. And these are actually something we've already seen. So y t here is the potential outcome. And we're writing the distribution for that here. But this is the same thing as if we were to write p of y given do t equals little t. Okay, so this do expression here is just another way of writing the potential outcome distribution. And a common shorthand that we'll use here is just removing the big letters. So writing p of little y given do little t. And these are all different ways of writing an interventional distribution, which we will shortly contrast to observational distributions. But first note that we can write the average treatment effect as this difference when we're using do operator here, or do notation. And importantly, this is just the difference between the first moment of two different interventional distributions. So the two different interventional distributions are p of y given do t equals one, and p of y given do t equals zero. And for both of those distributions, we're just taking the average over y. Then taking a difference between those two, that's, that's what the ATE is. And this is something we saw before in potential outcomes, but here's the interpretation with interventional distributions and do notation. So the most common observational distribution you'll be talking about is P of Y comma T comma X. So this is the joint over the outcome treatment and covariates. Here I use capital letters to denote that this is a distribution rather than a specific probability or density. And then a common interventional distribution that we'll see is P of Y given do capital T equals little t. That's just to talk about the causal effect of treatment on outcome. And this quantity is in contrast with the observational quantity that is P of Y given capital T equals little t. So remember that this quantity is just the distribution of Y that we get when we restrict to the subset of the data where the treatment is little t. Recall from the previous slide that this is quite different from do capital T equals little t, where we actually intervene on the treatment. And here's one more interventional quantity, which is the same as the one before, but now we are conditioning on a specific value of covariates. Okay, so interventional quantities have the do operator in them, and observational quantities do not. Importantly, observational quantities we can get from just the regular data. They don't require any experiments, whereas interventional quantities might require experiments, unless we can turn them into observational quantities. And that's exactly what identification is about. So in identification, we want to take some causal estimand that has a do operator in it, and turn it into a statistical estimand that doesn't have a do operator in it. 
If we can do that, we have what's known as identifiability. The causal estimate that we care about is identifiable, and this is not always the case. The way that we'll know whether or not we can identify some causal estimate is by looking at our causal model. So the top quantity here is directly accessible if we can experiment in the sense that we can intervene and set treatment to little t. And as we said before, the bottom quantity is accessible via just plain observational data. If we just have access to the joint distribution over y, t, x, we can access this conditional quantity. This causal estimate, p of y given do t, is equal to p of y given t under the assumption that there is no confounding. If there are some confounders x, so some common cause of y and t, x, then p of y given do t is actually equal to this more complicated quantity here. So sometimes the process of identification will take us from some simple looking quantity like p of y given do t to some more complicated quantity like this statistical estimate on the bottom here. And we'll get into this shortly with the backdoor adjustment.